Catullus One, in English. To whom shall I offer this charming new little book, just smartened up with dry pumice stone? Cornelius, to you, because you have been accustomed to think that there is something in my trifles. Since the time when you, alone of all the Italians, were bold enough to explain all ages in three volumes, they were learned books, produced with much hard work. So take and keep for yourself this little book, whatever it amounts to, and patroness virgin. May it still be read, after more than one century has passed. Qui dono, lepidum novum libellum, arido modo, pomic expolitum, corneli, tibi, namque tu solebas mersesse aliquid putare nugas, iam... Tu, causis es unis italorum, omnaevum tribus explicare cartis, doctis Jupiter et laboriosis, quarabe tibi, quid quid hoc libelli, quale cumque quod, o patrona virgo, plus uno maneat, Perenne cyclo. Catullus two. Sparrow, my Lesbia likes to play with. The one she enjoys holding in her lap. To whom she gives her fingertip to make him bite as she likes more sharply when shining because of my desire she finds it a precious thing to play with I think when her grave fire agrees she finds it a solace for her pain if I could play with you just as she does. I'd have a way of lightening my cares. Passer deliciae meae puellae, quid cum ludere, quen sinu tenere, qui primum digitum dara petenti, et acris solet incitare morsus, cum desidere o meo nitenti, carum nescio quid lubet iocari, et sola ciolum sui doloris, credotum gravis aqui esca tardor, tecum ludre sicut ipsa possem, et Tristis animi leware curas. Catullus 3 A time for mourning. Loves and cupids and any man of intelligence and love. The sparrow is dead. My girl's own sparrow that she loved more than her eyes, because it was sweeter and it knew her better than any girl might know her mother. The bird would not move from her lap, but hopping here and hopping there, chirped for its mistress, no one else. Now, it goes to the darkened pathway, 
out of which, they say, no one comes back. But curses on you, cursed darkness. Orcus, you eat up everything. You have taken my little sparrow away. Oh, badly done. Oh, poor little bird, it's all your fault. My poor girl's eyes are heavy and red with weeping now. Lugete, o venares cupidinesque, et quantum strominum venustiorum. Passer mortus est me ai puellae, passer deliciae me ai puellae. Quae plusi loculi suis amabat, nam melitus erat soanque norat, ipsa tam bene quam puella matrem. Nec sa grem milius moebat, sed cercum siliens moduc, modiluc, ad solam dominam usque pipiabat. Qui nunc it per iter tenebre cosum iluc, unde negant redire quemquam, at vobis Male sit malae tenebrae, orci quae omnia bella devoratis. Tam bellum mihi passerem abstulistis, o factum male, o miselle passer. Tua nunc opera meae puellae, flendo turgidoli, rubent ocelli. Catullus, number four. I particularly like this poem because if you've ever been out on a sailing boat, um, the thwack of the water against the hull as the boat rides over the waves when there's a stiff breeze blowing is somehow captured in this poem um, by Catullus. Here's the English translation. That yacht as I was telling my guests, regards herself as being the fastest of ships. There is nothing afloat that she could not overtake, whether she was driven with oars or by sail. She says that the windy Adriatic Sea will agree, the Cyclades roads, and the bleak Thracian Strait or the dark bay of Pontus, where, before she was a boat, she was long-haired woodland. For on Cytarus, on the back of the hill, she gave out a rustling with her speaking leaves. Pontic Amastris and Cytarus, green with box, all these, she says, were well known to her. From her very beginning she stood on that peak. It was here she first dipped oars, and from there she brought me over so many wild seas to port or starboard, as the wind called, or with Jove blowing astern on both sheets. And she had never cried mercy from any god ashore when she came from the last salt to this limpid lake. But these events are past. Now, hidden away, she grows old, quietly, offering herself up to the twin Castor and to Castor's brother. Passelus ille, quem videtis hospites, ait fuisse navium celerimus, 
Nequillius natanti simpetum trabis, nequisse praiterire siwe palmulis. Opus foret volare siwe lindeo, et hoc negat menacis hadri attici, negare litus insulas que cucladas, rodunque nobilor ridanque traciam, propontita trucumve ponticum sinum, ubiste post paselus ante afuid. Comata silva, nam cator inugo, loquent, Saipe sibilu di ditcoma, a mastri ponti get cotore buxifer, di bait fuisse tesse cognotissima, ait paselus, ultim ex origine, tu oste tisse dicit in cacumine, quim vise palmulas in aequore, et inde tot per impotenti affreta, erum tu lisse laiva siwe dextera, vocaret aura, siwe trunque Jupiter, simul secundus incidisse timpedem, ne culla vota littorali buste isse besse facta, cum venire tammari, no vissimo gadusque limpidum lacum, sed haec prius fuere, Nunc recondita, se net qui ete seque dedicatibi, gemelle castor et gemelle castoris. For us to live, my lesbia, is useless without us loving. And the observations of the censorious old men, are worth a penny every piece of advice. One day follows after another, and the sun comes back. But when once we have gone away, we do not return. Once night comes for us, it is night for us forever. Give me a thousand kisses, and then a hundred. Then give me a second thousand, a second hundred, and then another thousand, and then a hundred. And when we have made up many, many thousands, let us forget to count. Better not to know. It will bring someone's jealous eye upon us. If people know, we give so many kisses. Vivamus, mea lesbia, atque memus. Rumoresque senum severi orum, omnes unius estimemus, assis. Soles cidere tradire possunt, nobis, cum Semel occidit brevis lux, nox est perpetuna dormienda. Dami basse mille, dinde centum, din mille altra, din secunda centum, din dusqualtra mille, din de centum, din cum milia multa fecarimus, con turbabimus silla nesciamus. Aut ne quis malus invidere possit, cum tantum sciatesse passiorum. Flavius, I know that you would tell me your pleasures, if they were not, uh, shall we say, a little bit on the um, rough side of things. If they were not, you would not know how to keep quiet. It's obvious to me that you have picked some woman not quite in condition. And that, no doubt, makes you 
shut up. But you don't lie alone. That is plain as such a thing need be. Your bed cannot speak, but it screams. It has garlands of flowers. It is scented with Syrian olives. The bolsters and the cushions pressed down, thrown this way and that way. It is shaken. It is shaky. It goes up. It goes down. So nothing, but absolutely nothing, can possibly hide what you're getting up to. When you flop down in exhaustion, it's obvious that you're doing this because of your love diversions. So tell us whatever you've done, and was it successful? I should very much like to make Flavius and Flavius's pleasures the subject of some of my more agreeable verses. Flavi, delicias tu as catullo, ni sint ilepidae at quin elegantes, velis dicere, nec tacere possis, verum. Nescio, quid febricul o si scorti dilicis, hoc pudet fateri. Nam, te, non vidu as jacere noctes, ne qui quam tacitum cubile clamat, certis, ac serio fragrans olivo. Puvinusque, perraeque tic, Cetille atritus, tremulique quassa lecti, argutatio nambulati oque. Nam nista prevalet, nihil tacere, cur. Non tam latarac fututa pandas, ni tu quid facias ineptiarum. Quare, quid quid habes boni malique, dic nobis, volo te, ac tuos amores ad caelum lepido vocare versu. You ask me, Lesbia, how many kisses, make enough kisses for me to take from you, as many as there are sands in the desert in Libya, the drugged sands of Caranacea. Between the oracle of that burning Jove and the monument of the mythical Batus, as many kisses as there are stars in the quiet of the night, looking on hidden sex. That would be kisses enough for Catullus. To kiss you with, that would be more than enough. A number which could neither be counted by the inquisitive, nor put under any incantation or spell by wicked tongues. Quiris, quot mihi basate ones? Tu ai lespia sinsatis superque, quam magnus numerus libias sarenai, lassar piciferis jacet carenis oraculum jovis inter aestu osi, et bati veteris sacrum sepulcrum. Aut, quam sidra multa, cum tacet nox, Divos hominum vident amores, nam te basia multa basiare, ve sano satis, et super catullest, quae nec per numerare curosiosi, possint nec malla 
taskinare lingua. Catullus 8 You'd better stop messing around, Catullus, and accept that what you see is lost, is actually lost. Once upon a time, your days were shining when you used to go wherever the girl led you. She loved as none will ever be loved. Then those many pleasant things were done, which you wanted and the girl was willing to do. Certainly then your days were shining. She wants those things no more. You had better not want them, nor ask for what will not be given, nor live in pain. Be patient, firm up your mind. Goodbye, girl. Already Catullus is hardened. He does not seek you, and will not, since you are not willing. But you will suffer when you are asked for nothing at night. It is the end. What life is left for you? Who now will come to you? Who will think that you are pretty? Whom will you now love? Whose will you say you are? Whom will you kiss? And whose lips will you bite? But you, Catullus, accept fate and be firm. Miser Catulli, desinas ineptire, et quod vides perisse perditum ducas, fusere quandam candiditibi soles, cum ventitabas quo puella ducebat, Amata nobis quantum amabitur nulla, ibile multa cum jucosa fiebant, quae tu volebas, nec puella no lebat, fusere vere candiditibi soles, nunc iam illa non vult, tu quoque impotens noli, nec quae Fugit sectare nec miservive, sed obstinatamente perfer obdura, vale puella, iam catulus obdurat, nec te requiret, nec rogavit in vitam, at tu dolebis, cum rogabris nulla, scelesta vaite, quae tibi Manet vita. Quis nunc te dibit? Qui videbris bella? Quem nunc amabis? Quis esse diceris? Quem basiabis? Qui la bella mordebis? At tu, Catulle, destinatus obdura, Veranius, out of all my friends, the best of all, and here you are again, back to your aged mother and your all-agreeing brothers, those messengers were welcome, and I will see you safe, talking over Spain, its places, its facts and peoples as your custom is. Draw your neck to me, and kiss your smiling mouth and eyes. No one is luckier than I am at this moment, or happier. Warani, omnibus emeis amicis, antistans mihi milibus tracentis. Venistine domum ad tuos penates fratresque unanimos, anumque matrem. Venisti 
o mihi nunti i beati. We san ten colomen, adi anque berum, narrantem loca, facta nati ones, ut mos est tuus applicansque colum, jucundos oculosque suaviabor, o quantum stominum beatiorum. Quid me laetius est beatiusque? Varus had taken me from the forum where I was hanging around to see his mistress. Not at all a bad little fuck piece, as it seemed to me. Quite pretty. When we got there, we started chatting about various things. Among them, what kind of place Bithynia was now and how things were going then. In particular, whether I had made any money. I told them how things were, that there was nothing in it either for ourselves, the praetor, or his cohort, to enable anyone to come back with his hair well oiled, especially since the praetor was an utter bastard and didn't give a damn for his cohort. Still, they said, you must have got a few men to carry your litter. That's the country they come from. I, in order to make myself out to be one of the lucky ones, answered that I hadn't managed things so badly, poor as the province actually was, that I couldn't find eight men who could stand upright. In fact, I had no one, neither in Rome nor in Bithynia, who could lift a broken leg of a camp bed on his back. The girl said, What can you expect from a, from a whore? Would you be kind enough to lend me those men, to take me just as far as the temple of Serapis? Half a minute, I said to the girl, when I said that just now I was forgetting they actually belonged to Gaius Kinna. Of course, whether they are his or mine, it's all the same. I use them as if they were my own. But you are a nasty, tactless creature, you are. A person can't make the slightest mistake without getting into trouble. Varus me meus at suos amores, visum duxerate forotiosum. Scortilut mihi tum repente visumst, non sani lepidum nequin venustum, huc ut venimus incidere nobis sermones varii, in quibus, quid eset iam betenia, comodo saberet, Et quona mihi profuisit aere, respondit quod derat nihil neque ipsis, nec praetoribus esse nec cohorti, cur quisquam caput unctius referret, praesertim quibus esit iruma tor praetor nec faceret pili cohorte. At certe tamen inquiunt quod illic natum dicitur esse comparasti, Ad lecticam homines egut puellae, unum me facrem beatiorum, non inquam mihi tam fuit maligne, ut provincia quod mala incidisset, non pos octo homines parare rectos, at mi nullis serat, nec hic, nec quillic, fractum qui veteris pedem grabati, in collo sibi collocare posset, Hicilla ut decuit canae diorem, quae so inquit mihi micetulle paulum istos comoda, nam volat sarapim de ferri man inqui puellae, istut quod modo dixeram mabere fugit meratio meus sodalis. Cina est gaeus issibi paravit, verum Ut rilius an mei quid ad me, ut tortam bene quam mihi pararim, se tinsla male et molesta vivis, per quam non licet desse neglagentem. Furius and Aurelius, friends of Catullus, whether he has a mind to go to India, 
where the eastern ocean beats upon the shore, echoing far off, or to the Hyrcanians and the soft Arabians, to the sky 